Hi everyone, and welcome to Becoming a Homeopath. Um, and the, I will be going through all the different courses, the part-time course, the four-year part-time course, the fast track, two-year fast track course, as well as the foundation course, and all aspects of what we offer here at CHE. So my name is Marcus Fernandez, as I said, and I'm the CHE founder and principal. And we founded the college back in 1998, uh, uh, well, 24 years ago now. Can't believe it. It's, it's gone so gone so far and and we we're, we're very busy at CHE we do a lot of postgraduate work and courses as well as practitioner training and in fact we do training all the way from home prescriber and I know many of you probably done a home prescriber course all the way up to practitioner graduate level and the the main aspect of, of CHE is that we do both classical and practical homeopathy within your training and I'll talk about that later in the presentation and go into much more detail uh, around that but even though I am the principal and the founder of CHE, I am a homeopath. I still practice homeopathy. It's I've done it for the last 30 years. I love homeopathy. With, in fact, I don't know what's me and what's homeopathy anymore. I love it so much. And I'm sure you guys do who are listening to that and you use it in your own lives, the lives of your families and your friends and yourself. You know what homeopathy can do. And But I think it's really important that when you look at that, it's the reasons why we want to do this, why we want to become a practitioner or do a further training. It's because often homeopathy is a calling, it calls us. And I always say, you don't decide to get into homeopathy, it calls you when the time is right. Now, when I first heard about homeopathy, I knew nothing about it at all. I was like 20, you know, 20 years of age. I, I, my story is I, I was in a band, I was a singer in a band. I'd done business studies at college and I left. and. A graduate and then I, I, I wanted to be a rock and roll star and, and that was my main objective of 20 years of age. Now at the time uh, I, I was a struggling musician, we never had any m much money, we got paid after we did our live gigs and things like that and we were booked to go on a tour of Germany and at the time I didn't have any money even to get out, just get to Germany. Um, so what I did, I had to go and get a job and the only job I could get at the time was working in a nursing home and it wasn't very good money, minimum wage but, but it was the only opportunity I had. I had no inclination of working in a nursing home, but I was doing it because I needed the money. But when I started working there, I, I actually really enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed the working there, dealing with the elderly pay, uh, clients we had there, and, and the whole sort of caring aspect, which I'd never really experienced before. But one day I was having a cup of coffee uh, in the coffee room, and the matron that, that uh, worked, at the, worked at the nursing home started chatting to me and asking me about what I did and said, you know what, Marcus, you'd make a really good homeopath. I'd never heard the word before, I don't know what really what she was talking about. So she explained what homeopathy was and, and, and it sounded really interesting and fascinating and I said, oh, that's, that sounds really good, yeah, really interesting. She said, you know what, I'm gonna be just starting a training um, in September and there's an open day in, in a week's time, why don't you come with me? And I was like, well, no, 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 this sounds really interesting, but I'm, I'm in a band. I won't be here this long. I mean, I'm, I'm only working here for a few weeks. She said, no, no, I think you should come. I think you make a really great homeopath. I, was, you know, I, I didn't really know what to say. I said, no, 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 you know, carry on. Just finished my cup of coffee and left. But then every day I saw her, she'd ask me the same thing. Why don't you come with me to the open day? Have we got a good feeling about this? You should come. And in the end, just really to shut her up, I decided to, I said, look, I'll come with you. I'll come with you to keep me company, but I ain't signing up, okay? I ain't gonna sign up. So, so we arranged to go, and the day before we were supposed to go for the open day, um, I used to suffer a lot with tonsillitis because I was a singer in the band, using my voice a lot. But I, I, I suffered from tonsillitis since I was a kid as well. So I, what would normally happen, I'd normally go to the doctors, get some antibiotics, uh, and, and deal with it that way. But, but that day, I, I tried to get into the doctors, they couldn't see me, they had no appointments. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna try this homeopathy. So I went, took the bus into town, and I, I got a, um, I, I looked at the remedies, and I went to the natural health food store, and I looked at all the remedies that they had there. They had a whole selection of remedies. And I looked at all the different names, like weird names. I thought, what, Arsenicum or um, Nux Vomica? And I thought, God, that's a really great name for a band, Nux Vomica. Um, and I bought the remedy that fitted me was uh, gelsemium and it fitted all my symptoms so I, I purchased a gelsemium 30c i think it was and i went home and i remember taking taking the remedy 
Now, remember, I had no, I thought, oh, that's the thing. What happened was that I, I said to myself, if this works, then I'll go to the open day tomorrow. But if it doesn't work, I ain't going to go. I'm not going to go. So I took the gel samium 30C and I remember taking it and I was at home and I remember falling asleep and waking up and I was just I was soaking wet with sweat. I sweated so much after taking the remedy. I thought, wow, this is pretty powerful. Well, I took another one and, and the same thing happened. And often you'll find this with remedies, but especially with kids, you give kids remedies to kids if they're ill and they'll fall asleep. And this happened all day. But I felt really good in myself. I remember thinking I felt good in myself. Something was happening. I wasn't sure what was happening, but something was happening in a positive way. So I, I woke up the next morning, completely disappeared. And I've never had tonsillitis since, 30 years later. Never had it since. So I went to the open day. I went along. Still had no inclination of signing up or anything. I'm just going along with my friend. But I remember the first lecture by the late, great Robert Davison. Uh, who, who was teaching that day and he was giving a lecture and explaining about homeopathy and, and, and all the different cases he was sharing. And I remember going really, really quiet inside. I remember going really still, which I'd never experienced before. But I realised now what I was experiencing, I was hearing truth for the first time. It really affected me profoundly. It was, it was deep. It affected me de very, very deeply. And then the next thing I, I remember thinking, if this is true, how come the whole world doesn't know about it? How come the whole world doesn't know about homeopathy? And I was so taken and so, like it pulled me in. And it was almost like I didn't have a choice. I had to do this. I had to find out more about it. And yes, as you can, as you realize, I signed up for the course. I signed up for the course. I didn't know how I was going to afford it. I didn't have to sell any money. But again, if you, I think if you're following the right path, it comes, money will come, and it will be, you, you'll be provided for if it is your right path. And that's what happened to me right at the last moment. I, I got the money to do the course. So, and from that day forth, I, I made a, a pact with myself that, I would spread homeopathy around the world, and that's what I would do. I would spend my life, and I have for the past 30 odd years, exactly done that. With my own practice, treating my own patients, having a center in London, the Healthy Living Center, we have all different types of practitioners in there, uh, to, to them founding the school in 1998. And now we're a global, we have a global reach all around the world with students through our online courses, and it is getting to, to, to all different parts of the world because I truly believe that homeopathy is the medicine of the people. And if, if we just tell people about it, at any opportunity, or just plant the seed, then this is how it, people will get to know about it. This is how people will get to know about it. And, and how I see homeopathy is, it's like the keys to a lock. I mean, all the healing wisdom is within us. All the natural healing wisdom is within us and the remedies are the key. And we, we, talk, the, 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 we talk about the vital force in homeopathy, you know, in Chinese medicine, it's qi or in Ayurveda, it's prana. Those remedies are just tapping in to the, uh, our own natural healing wisdom, what we call the vital force. And I often, when I'm explaining to people that, you know, it's a bit like a car dashboard. If the oil lights flashes, it means there's something wrong in the engine. Now, if you just take the bulb out or just suppress the symptoms, there's still a problem in the engine and the car's gonna break down two or three miles down the road. And as homeopaths, what we do, we go into the engine, we go into the cause behind it and we fix it and the bulb will go out by itself because there's no longer a problem in the engine. Because often our, our physical symptoms is just an external manifestation of our internal state. So many times people will come to see us and what, what's different with the health paradigm of homeopathy is that we take people as a totality, mentally, emotionally, physically. We just don't treat symptoms. Now, if somebody comes in with symptoms like arthritis, for example, and you, you'll take the symptoms and get the characteristic symptoms of, of that particular arthritis. And remember, every can have arthritis, but we'll have different symptoms. And in homeopathy, we're trying to find those characteristic symptoms in order to match them to a remedy. 
because there's not one remedy for this one condition. There's many remedies because it's individual. But somebody could come in with arthritis and you'll take the symptoms of what makes it better, what makes it worse, what's the sensation, where's the location, all very important for the homeopath. But the next question we'll ask is, when did it all start? And the person could say, well, it started five years ago. And then the next question we ask that is, what was happening in your life five years ago? Now, often people have never been asked that. And they could say, well, that's when I got divorced. You know, the body language changes and they become quite stoic and, and, you, and, and you ask more about it. And they say, well, yeah, I've never forgiven my partner. I've never forgiven my husband, my wife, my partner. They had an affair and, and, and we split up, but I'm still really angry. And you can see when they say the arthritis in the fingers and you can see that they've never dealt with that grief. They've never dealt with that anger. They've never dealt with that resentment they may be suffering from. So in homeopathy, we're dealing with that. We're dealing the cause behind it because this is just a, an external manifestation of that internal state. Now, I'm not saying all cases of arthritis is to do with divorce, but what my point is, is that as homeopaths, we're looking into that emotion also behind it. Like I so said, we get into the engine and we take it as part of the case. So you could treat that person for grief, anger, resentment, whatever, which covers the arthritis symptoms as well. And the person can come back a month later after taking the remedy, say, how are you? And they say, yeah, my arthritis is 50% better, but what the hell was that remedy gave me? Because I couldn't stop crying for three days. All this grief came out and I had a dream about my ex-husband and, and I was angry with him in the dream. But then, then after that, I was sort of crying in the dream and we sort of, we, we, we made up and I feel like something's lifted off my shoulders. And so what the remedy's done is help, again, connect to that vital force and help deal with that, what people were holding on. It takes you back to the place where you can decide again. Do I hold on to it or let it go? But again, as I said, the remedies are just taking, that they're just tapping into that, that natural healing wisdom that we, we all have within us, which we all have within us. And you see a picture there of Sherlock Holmes on the, on the, on the slide. And, and, and as homeopaths, we're very much like that. We're, we're like detectives. So somebody will come in, we look at, we call them cases. We look at the case and we're looking at all the different things that have happened to people. So people are born here, they're here now, and different things have happened in, in their lives. And our job is to help get them back to that state of health and vitality. Like we were when we were kids. You know, we, we have vitality. And it's, uh, vitality is not just energy, it's vitality is, again, like this picture here, this is not me, by the way, this is a stock picture, but that picture of vitality, you know, kids, you know, that, that, uh, up to a certain age, that they're, they're living in the moment. They're not, they're not dwelling on the past or worried about the future, they're living in the moment. And I can remember being a kid, you know, being on my bike all day, you know, holiday time, I'd be on my bike, playing outside, coming for a sandwich and run back outside again. And I'd be on my bike all day again, and, and then they'd do the same the next day. Why? Because I had vitality. I didn't wake up and go, oh, God, my back's stiff. I think I'll give the bike a rest today. <sighs> then take it easy. No, why? Because I had vitality. And what happens in our lives, often vitality can get blocked for different things that can happen in our lives, be it grief, be it trauma, be it surgery, be it whatever it is, it can have a fit, toxicity, it can have an effect and, and block our vital force. So as a detective, we're trying to find out what is the cause? What is the cause? Why is this person in a dis-ease state? And dis-ease can have many, many, um, many, many causes. As I said, it can be things like, as I mentioned, trauma. It can be, it can be, that can be emotional, physical trauma. It can be toxicity, it can be all different things, lack of love and joy in our life. It can be so many different things that make us dis-ease. But health, you know, it's, pe most people's concept of health is not being sick, but it is much more than that. And that's our job. We're vital force practitioners. We're helping people go back to the position where they can decide again. And I think if you want to train as a practitioner, you should all be having homeopathy. All the way through your training, we advise all our students to, to, to do that because it's important to, A, be healing ourselves, physician heal thyself, but also to know what the process is uh, through homeopathy. So the question I ask everybody when I interview, now just let you know, if you do apply for the course, I personally interview everybody that applies for the practitioner training. Why? 
because I feel it's very important that I know the people why you want to train as a practitioner. Because we are training you to go out there and do homeopathy, treat clients, treat patients. This is why we're training you, okay? We're training you to be a practitioner. So you'll fill in an application form, and but the question I'll always ask you at the, at the interview um, that we do is, why do you want to become a homeopath? And I think I said early on, you know, the word, because why this title is called becoming a homeopath, because we become a homeopath. It's not just like learning facts, even though you will learn facts, you know, like, like history or what you're ever learning. You become it. It's that there's an, there's an unfoldment process that goes on when you're training as a homeopath. And as I said, just mentioned before, that personal development is a thread that runs all the way through this, being a self-reflective practitioner, looking at our own stuff. Because you can, watch, you can be watching a lecture about a remedy or go, oh my God, I need that remedy. Or my partner needs that remedy. Or the dog needs a remedy. The kids need a remedy. And you'll find every remedy you'll learn, oh my God, I need that. You'll order it. <laughs> but also you'll be learning cases and you'll hear cases and you'll think in, you know, in lectures or you'll hear cases in the cl our clinical training. And you'll think, that, oh my goodness, that's my life. Or that's the life of my mother. Or that was the life of whoever. So it's important that you're in a self-reflective process as well as we go through the course. So we become a homeopath. So I'll say, why do you want to become a homeopath? And why now? Why this time in your life? And many people have many, many reasons. And actually over the past couple of years through the pandemic and lockdowns, it's really made people pause. And what it's done is it's put health and well-being at the center of everybody's consciousness. And this is why we've seen a huge demand for homeopathy as a practitioner. I think the, the latest Google thing uh, part of our team found was that the, the search for homeopaths in, on Google has gone up 187% year on year. Because people are looking for more natural ways of healing themselves and their families healing themselves and healing their families. And this with that, like with the home prescriber course that, with that, that, we, that we have, we gave it away for free during the pandemic and during the lockdowns because I could see so many people were disempowered around their health and well-being. We felt that, you know what, we just got to give this away because we used to charge for it as a course, we just gave it away. And I think now we've had over 20,000 people have, have attended that course online, which is phenomenal. But what it does is it helps people empower people how to use the basic remedies. You know, people use those little remedy kits or just use individual remedies because the more that you use homeopathy, the more that you use it, the more that you learn from it, the more you become empowered. And I used to do this in my mother and baby clinics I used to run here in London uh, where I used to teach them how to use remedy kits. You know, the top 20 remedies, how to use them for colic, how to use them for coughs, for colds. And I used to run these little classes. And what I used to love was when people would use it, you know, oh, yeah, I tried it on little Johnny. He had a cold and I gave him some pulsatilla. And within, you know, 24 hours, 40 hours, he was so much better. And people were empowered. And, and if you empower people to take charge of their health, then, then you, you get out of that fear place, a place of fear. Because there's many things we can deal in the home and everyday things that we can deal with with homeopathy ourselves before you even go into a practitioner. So this is what's amazing about homeopathy, that we can use it on ourselves, on our families, on our animals. There's many veterinary surgeons now, vets, that use homeopathy. Um, I mean, it's huge in, in, in farmers and the farming, farming community. Uh, but also now in agriculture, they're now using remedies on, on crops. There's a lot of research going on in that at the moment. So homeopathy, it's, it's not even gone into its sort of golden age yet, but it's, it's coming. And I, I've never been so excited as I am at the moment in 30 years of being in homeopathy for homeopathy because so many people now are open to it and are using it, which is amazing. But also the why now. The why now is interesting. Doing these interviews that I have done, I've done interviews for the past 24 years. What's become really, really clear this last couple of years in interviews is that people are looking for much more purpose and meaning into their lives. They're looking for more purpose and meaning in their lives. Because I said, you know, the whole world pause during these lockdowns and people are saying, well, it gives people time to think, actually, what do I want to do with my life? So often people who apply for the courses, they're changing careers, 
mature students. That's 90% of our, our, our students are people who are trying to retrain. They, they, they've been doing a job they've been doing for many years. They want to change. They want to have more purpose and meaning in their life. Or maybe the kids have, have grown up now and, le and left home. And now they, they want to do something for them, for themselves. And that's really the main reason you should be doing any of these courses is for you. This is for you. And as I said, mentioned before, people don't decide to get into homeopathy. It is calling you. And I'd say to all of you, if homeopathy is calling you, it may have been calling you for many years, but now it's getting louder and louder and louder, then you have to do it. You have to have the courage, as I said in my slide, to follow your heart. And I'd say to everybody who's, who's listening to this recording, if it's calling you, then follow your heart. Have, it takes courage to follow your heart. If we just listen to this all the time, it'll send us all, all down weird rabbit holes. But if we follow our heart, truly follow our heart and listen to the truth of who we are, then it will always lead us in the right direction. And I'm a great believer that things will then manifest for you to, to follow your heart. To follow your heart. So as I said, many people are changing careers. Many people, the kids have left home. Many people, kids have now gone to school. And this is often the time when they, they decide that they want to, to, to make a change. Make a change. But I say to every single one of you, please, only apply for the course if you're serious about doing this. You know, we, we, the world needs, as I said before, the world needs healing right now. It needs homeopathy and we need the practitioners to do it. So please only apply if you're really serious about becoming a practitioner. And we'll talk about the courses next. But just to give you a bit of a recap about CHE, I, I mentioned it briefly at the beginning. We were founded in 1998, which I can't believe is at least 24 years ago. Yeah, because in 2022, is that right? Yeah, well, my maths is not always great. Um, and it's a non-for-profit organization. And as I mentioned, we do practical and classical homeopathy. Now, just to, to be clear, what that means is when we set up CHE, it was either very, very classical, uh, the way of prescribing, which is like very, at the time, it was very one re remedy and weight and very psychological, it got very, very into the psychology, uh, but they're always very practical. So it was more than one remedy or combination remedies, and it was very political. You had to be in one camp or the other. And, and they'd only practice in that way, one way of prescribing. And we said, well, no, th th there's, there's many ways to prescribe, and actually it should be patient or client-driven, not methodology-driven. So in other words, Whoever walks through your door, you need a tool in your toolbox in order to help them. If they've got psychological issues, mainly, you need a, need a prescribing technique for that. If you've got uh, chronic pathology, uh, then you need a prescribing for that. Say, for example, people have been on eczema for many years and they've had steroids and cortisone and all different drugs. You need a, a methodology for that. Some has never been well since taking the drugs. It's called tautopathy. We've got a methodology for that. Sometimes you just need to treat the person's organs before you even get to, to the person themselves. So somebody comes in with a, with, with a lot of, uh, I don't know, emotional uh, stuff going on and, and, and chronic grief or, or, or whatever it is emotionally, but they've got heart pathology, then often you need to give them a tonic just for the heart, specifically for the heart, like critigus, uh, low potency daily, just to get the heart back functioning properly before you even get to the person. So there's all these different ways of prescribing. And so we at CHE train you so whoever walks to your door, you've got a tool in the toolbox in order to help them. Because if you've only got one way of prescribing, one spanner doesn't fit all nuts. You need different spanners, you need different tools. Using a lot of analogy there, car analogy and, um, and tools, and I'm very mechanical today. But but one, nut, one, one span isn't for all nuts, so you need different ways of prescribing. And I know this from, from practical experience. So, I mean, I've worked all, in all different aspects of homeopathy, mother and baby clinics, as I mentioned before. I've worked in drug and alcohol projects. I've, I've practiced homeopathy all around the world, under a tree in, in a village in, in Africa, all over the place, all over the place. And what it taught me was that you need to adjust to the people sat in front of you, and you need to have a toolbox in order to help people wherever they're at wherever they're at and it's not one way 
Um, we've trained over 1,200 practitioners um, since, we, since we began in, back in 1998. And we do everything, as I mentioned before, from beginners, home prescribing, all the way to continued professional development for people who are, uh, who are qualified practitioners, foundation courses, practitioner, all different courses that we do. Um, and the beginners course or the home subscriber course is very is, is a very um, you can all get that it's on our website uh, chehomeopathy.com you can register it download and get access to it for free it's a five hour home prescriber um, course I would say ask tell everybody to watch that it's such a great course um, you've got access to it and it's free um, and then often we uh, people say well I'm not sure if I want to be a practitioner but I'd like to deepen my knowledge and what we have for that is the one year foundation course and that's online it's a one-year online foundation course. In fact, all our trainings that we're offering in January intake is all online. Uh, in September, we do do a part-time um, part uh, intake for foundation and the part-time course here in London. But in January intake, it's all, uh, all online. And for the first time, we're offering the fast-track training in January. This January, January 2022, normally it's only once a year we open the the gates for people to come and, and train uh, normally in September but we've had a lot of demand this year people saying oh I can't wait till next September so we've decided to do an intake in January and and I'll talk about that in, in, later so we have a two-year fast track or four-year part-time practitioners course as I mentioned classroom online uh, back in 2004 we, we uh, t until 2017 we ran the bs honors course in homeopathy at middlesex university uh, and our last intake was 2017 and we're not running it anymore because middlesex have closed their complementary medical department now so we don't run the degree course anymore this is just a licentiate qualification which is your license to practice which is fully accredited by the society of homeopaths um, and you can be straight onto their register because we're an accredited course. Um, but also you people, we have people from all over the world. So you have to register with other, your organization wherever you are in the rest of the world, or you may not have to register. Um, and people ask us this question, is this qualification good to use in the Middle East or in South America? We always say the same thing. The education we're giving you, uh, you have to find out in the country or even the state or even the province where you live to see what the rules and regulations around homeopathy are. Some they have no rules at all. Some people say, it's countries say you have to be a doctor. You've got to find out. Um, you've got to find out wherever, wherever you are. But we have students now from all over the world studying and graduates from Singapore to Taiwan, Japan to North America, a lot of students from, from America, Canada, uh, Middle East, all over the, all over the world. So um, you can always email in and always ask us, if you have any questions. We've also got schools now in Hungary, Poland, Turkey, and Bulgaria, uh, both online and classroom. And we're committed to sustainability. So that means, what that means is, we used to have students who were flying in from all over the world. This is before the pandemic. For our part-time courses here in London, we decided that, and fast-track courses, and we decided that actually, you know, this wasn't great for, for, for this is not great for sustainability uh, and for the planet. So this is why we started to offer online courses. And all our courses, if you see our lectures, and I'd say go onto our website and look at our lectures online on our website, sample lectures. You'll see the way that we recorded it all in high definition. It feels like you're in the classroom. Well, you are in the classroom. It's being filled in our classes in London. So you feel that experience of, of actually of being there. Um, and as I said, the qualification is the licentiate from the Centre for Homeopathic Education. So these are the different courses that we offer. So practitioner courses, you can do four years part time and I'll go into detail on each course in a moment. You can do two years fast track. And basically what that is, is the four year course in two years. So the four year course is really for people that are working and they may be working full time or busy with the family and they just want to do it part time over four years. The two year fast track is for people that have the time. So if you do have the time, then this is the fast track is for you and you can do it in two years. Uh, or you can do a combination. So, for example, uh, it's like can either be two years part time. So you can do two years of the part time course. Because remember, one fast track year is equivalent to two years. So you could do two years part time and then decide, you know what, I've just got to do this final year. I, I'm so obsessed with homeopathy. I want to do this. I want to qualify sooner. Then you can do that and do your final year fast track. So would, you can do it in three years or the other way around. One year fast track. Uh, and then you may decide, you know, something can happen with work and you have to now go about working full time. You could then go and do two years part time. 
you still would do it in three years. So, so we're very flexible at CG. You know, we've been doing this a long, long time. Some people are online and they decide they want to come to the classroom based training in London. Other people may be doing the classroom based training in London and want to go online. So, so we're very flexible. You know, we're very flexible, uh, flexible about how you can move um, as, as long as, you know, it, it fits in with what we're doing here with the fast track. Um, and, and also we'll talk about the foundation course because the foundation course is the first year of the part time training. OK, and there's an option then you can, if you wish, say five modules in, you can transfer to the part time training. And we have a lot of people that do that. So the online part time course is a practitioner course. As I said, it's for four years and it's 10 modules uh, per academic year. So if you start in January, then you'll finish in September and that's your first academic year. Um, 10 modules are released in that time. And then at the end of September, you go into your second year and we have 10 modules uh, released the year. Each module will contain maybe between eight or eight to nine lectures uh, or eight to 10 lectures, depends on, on the module. And each, mo each lecture is around an hour, uh, an hour's length. So, so, so you can see roughly it's between eight to nine hours, 10 hours a month of actually watching the recorded lectures, which it works out roughly about two to two and a half hours, three hours uh, a week, around two and a half hours a week. So but you, when, we, when we talk about this, when we talk about study skills uh, on the course that you have to block your time out. You've got to block the time out to watch those videos um, as well as you have to do assessments as well. And people often ask, well, how long do I have to study for? Well, that's the, that's the benchmark for watching the minimum for watching the, the, watching the lectures. And you've got to take your own notes like you would if you were in sat in the class. But you and, and you have little quizzes at the end of the modules to making sure you've got what we've taught you. Uh, but I'm telling you now, you will become obsessed. So you'll buy books, you'll become obsessed and you'll go way beyond it. And you get out of this course. What do you put into it? You're adult learners. You know, you're adult learners. You'll get out of what we can give you. We give you guidance like you have to do the assessments to watch the videos. But then you've got to really do, you know, put the effort into it. So you have nearly 100 hours of video lectures per year to watch ac academic year. Uh, and this, what's great about it, you can pause it, rewind it, go back to it if you need to. It's all there in your student portal, which I'll talk about later. You also have a live element to, to, the, to this course. Even though it's an online course and you're watching recording videos, there's also uh, monthly live tutorials all online. We do this on Zoom. And even though it's not mandatory, um, to attend these tutorials, we, we highly advise it because it really bring, it, you'll feel a sense of community because we do have intakes and each intake has a group. So you'll be in your group, which will follow, which you'll be part of until you finish your training. And what's important about that is that is that sense of community is that feeling that you're with like minded individuals. So even though you may come from all different aspects, all different parts of, of the world, all different backgrounds, all different cultures, what brings you together is your love and passion for the subject and you will make lifelong friends. I mean, I've, I have this feedback all the time from students saying, oh my goodness, I'd, I didn't think I'd make such lifelong friends, you know, within the community. People have never even met just online. But, you know, the whole world's changed. Most people are online now. So that's not only changed education, it's also changing the way that we practice homeopathy. So, you know, most people's practice now on Zoom, FaceTime, they, they, they use this technology and that means you're in a global market, not just in a local market anymore. When I started, there wasn't even the Internet. It wasn't even that wasn't even a word. You know, we just use the health food stores and that's how we got people got to know us. I'm not saying you can't still do in, you know, connect with people and have a practice face to face. But the online side has just made a fundamental shift uh, over the past two years. And people love the patients and clients love the flexibility of being able to do online consultations. So back to the monthly live tutorials, if you can't make the tutorials for whatever reason, then they are recorded and they'll go on your student area within 24 hours of the tutorial. But it's a great opportunity to ask any questions you have about what you're learning, about homeopathy, about cases you may have. Um, and also, like I said, it connects you with your group because we do it all on Zoom. I do a lot of these tutorials in, in your first part of your training, so you'll see me a lot. Uh, and whether that's a good or bad thing, you, may, you, you decide. Uh, but it's, it's a really great way of, of coming together. 
Also, you'll get handouts and PowerPoints from each, each lectures and modules that you learn so you can download. And as you start your online, start your clinical training, which is um, normally in the, uh, in the part-time course starts from the second year. So from, the, from February of your second year, you start doing your online clinical workshops, which, which are where we'll start seeing, you'll start seeing uh, and observing uh, practitioners taking cases live, okay? So it could be acute cases, it could be chronic cases. You'll also do some group work as well within that. And then as you progress into the third year on the part-time course, you, you will um, start you becoming an active case taker in our clinics. And this is where you'll be taking the cases and supervised by the clinician um, on the day. And we, again, we do all this live on Zoom. Uh, but this is where really homeopathy, this is where homeopathy comes from theory into, uh, sorry, from theory into practice. Everything you've learned, you can now apply. Uh, and also from the third year, we encourage you to start building your own practice. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, so by the time you qualify, you'll have a practice up and running by the time you finish in the fourth year. You will have assignments and tests. And it's a mixture of essays, which will range from 1,000 to 1,500 word essays, uh, and tests as well that you have to do online tests. But again, you're very prepared for all of these. We prepare you for all the tests. We prepare you with all the assignments. And basically, we throw the ball to you and you bounce it back. So we throw the ball to you in the lectures and tutorials and you bounce it back by doing the assignments and the, the online tests. Now the fast track is two years. So it's the four years, but in two, as I mentioned. So this is 20 modules per academic year. So you start in January, 2022. Uh, that first academic year will finish at the beginning of September. And then at the end of September, you start your second year and then you'll graduate uh, in June 20, June, end of June 2023. So this is for people that have the time to do this. So this is 20 modules a year, as I said, uh, normally between eight to 10 lectures in that. So this roughly works out around 16 hours to 18 hours a month of videos you have to watch. Um, again, that breaks down to like four hours, four and a half hours a week of watching the videos. You've got to set out your block time. And again, we teach you how to do this in our study skills, that you have to have the time in the week when you watch the videos. Now, you could, if you want, just sit down and just, you know, sit down and watch eight, ten lectures all at once um, and, and do it like a Netflix binge fest. But, you know, that's up to you. It's, it's the way that you learn. I find personally, I, I'm, I study, I study a lot online with different courses. Uh, I'm an eternal student. Um, and I have to set that time out to, 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 to block it out in order to watch uh, the courses and, and do the work. Um, again, you have to do assessments and assignments uh, as well around that. Uh, and I'll show you an assessment calendar in a moment. Now, instead of having one monthly tutorial on the part time, you have two monthly live tutorials. And these tutorials are around two hours, OK, between 90 minutes, and 120 minutes. Um, after my tutorials, they're definitely two hours because I can't stop talking. Um, but again, as I said, for the part-time course, we um, we can ask any aspect of homeopathy you want and you can uh, talk about what you're learning. And again, just getting together a group. If you can't make it, they are recorded, as I said. Same, you get handout and PowerPoints. Same with the online clinical workshops. But your online clinical uh, workshops will still, clinical training will really will start around June time, um, around May, June time, uh, if you start in January. And, um, and then by the time you get into the second year, you become the active case taker. And so again, we put you into clinics very much, very, very quickly. In fact, by the end of the first year of the fast track training, we expect you to start building your practice, okay, outside CHE. So the time you qualify uh, in the second, end of the second year, you've got to practice up and running. Same thing, written assignments and tests, but again, you'll find that whatever their part-timers are doing, you're doing it twice. Okay, so the course structure, let's get into the course structure. So um, we have, it's split up as, as, as levels, level one, level two, and level three. So the first level is we have four main, main module areas, okay? So you have homeopathic philosophy. So what, so what this is, this we start you from the principles of homeopathy, like cures like, you know, the minimum dose, law of similars, and all the way into the or Hanuman, into the organon, do an extensive work in the organon, uh, which is like the homeopathic Bible, as it were, for homeopathy. Uh, and you go through that and you go through James Tyler Kent and, and how he developed from philosophy. Really important bedrock of your education. You need this bedrock of philosophy because the philosophy informs your case taking, it informs your case analysis, it informs everything. So we really try to link back 
to that. And the the the, the books that you'll, you'll you'll be asked to have, you'll have for life as a as a homeopath. You know, these aren't books just for the course. So your philosophy books, your organ on. You look at my shelf; I've got full of philosophy books because you'll go back to it again and again and again, which is really important. Next main module area is Materia Medica. This is where you learn remedies. You start off learning right from the scratch. You learn Arnica, uh, Calendula, get the basic remedies. Then you'll go into the Polycrest remedies uh, like Phosphorus, like Apodium, Sepia, Nux Vomica, the big, big, big remedies and all the different aspects of them, the mental aspects, the emotional aspects, the physical aspects, the essence of these remedies. Um, and so you really get a good, again, good grounding in, in the Materia Medica. Uh, acute remedies, chronic remedies. You'll also be learning anatomy and physiology. Uh, it doesn't matter if you, what your background is. We like to start everybody from the scratch again with AMP, and this is clinical AMP. So this is this, we don't get into the detail of biochemistry and all that. This is clinical AMP, which you'll see in practice. So we'll go through the systems of the body. So for example, say we went through the cardiovascular system, then you'll be in the mater in the remedies you'll be learning in the Materia Medica. You'll be learning the remedies for circulation and heart issues like lachesis or you know all the different remedies. So it ties in with what you're learning in the remedy wise in with anatomy and physiology. And this is the one area, people haven't got a background in this, this is the one area that people often uh, can uh, sort of feel insecure about. But again, we've got a lot of support here academically and we, we you know, just, you just let us know if you're struggling, but there's a lot of support here for you. And the person teaching the AMP, even though she's got a science background, she is a homeopath and she brings that homeopathic element into it. Clinical skills and casework, how to take an acute case, how to take a chronic case. You do this very early on, whether it's fast track or part time, you learn this very, very early on. Really important to know about acute prescribing and how to take an acute case, that, that which then informs your chronic prescribing and how to take a chronic case. So that will be level one that you do. Level two continues on. So um, again, it, um, because there's three levels over four years or three levels over two years, um, it's different for different courses, but these are the modules that you'll be covering. So then you do carry on with Materia Medica, go Materia Medica 2, again, just more remedies that you're learning, different types of remedies that you're learning, which is really important because you, you know there's over 3,000 remedies. We can't teach you 3,000 remedies, too many, but we teach you the major remedies that, that you'll need to know. Um, also, I should have mentioned back in, in Module 1, you learn the classical approach is the main prescribing technique. Uh, in, in level one. And then as you come into level two, you start learning a different technique called Isiogaleas method, another prescribing uh, technique that you will learn. Uh, you also do research. Now you don't have to do the research, but you're taught about research. And this is research that's based around homeopathy. Because a lot of the times we get all this, especially in the mainstream media, uh, that there's no research in homeopathy, it's all, all placebo, blah, 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 blah. Well, the lectures that you'll have here is are lectures from somebody who's a scientist uh, from King's College in London who trained as a homeopath. Uh, and so she'll show you all the, uh, not only the language of research, especially if you haven't got a background in research, that you need to know the language of research. And then she'll show you all the studies uh, around homeopathy because there's so many, so much research out there now in homeopathy, as I mentioned before. Um, you know, not only just with humans, but in agriculture now and all different things that are going on around the world, which is really, really exciting. So we think our homeopaths now need to know about research. So when people say there's no research out there, if you're in a situation where you're having a conversation with somebody and then you say, well, do you know about this study or this study or this study? So, and and it's, so you'll, you'll know how to critique papers, how to understand them. Um, like I said, you don't have to do the research, but often sometimes people do. They go on and, and they'd like to follow up on, on research. So, so we encourage that, but you need to know that. And we give you links to a lot of research journals um, as being part of the course that you can look into. Uh, and even people with no research background, that they love this module because it really makes them more secure in what they're learning. Uh, and that is, there is a lot, a lot of evidence. And if I've ever approached by somebody who says, oh, homeopathy, a load of rubbish, there's no, you know, it's, it's, it's all placebo. I say, oh, what's your experience? And often they don't have any. They have no experience of homeopathy. It's just something they've read. So this, I think, is really important as we go forward, that you know, you know the research that is out there and is continuing to, to take place around the world on homeopathy. Your clinical training, I, I touched on that before, about when you start your clinical training. So that starts in, in, in the level two. You start off as an observer. 
Uh, and this is at our low cost clinic that we run online. Uh, we've run the low cost clinic for 24 years, obviously not all online 24 years because it wasn't no online, but this was physical, a physical clinic. Now we do it all online because we have patients from all over. All, you'll see all different types of patients and clients, your children, the elderly, uh, people with all different types of problems from eczema, asthma, emotional problems. You get a really w wide range of, of, of exposure to different clients. And you start off observing a case taker taking the case and you develop all those um, observation skills, all the nonverbal communication skills that you pick up. Um, and, you know, really developing the art of listening. Because you can't think and listen at the same time. You know, to be truly present in the therapeutic space is a really crucial part of be, being a practitioner. So, so we teach you and help you develop all that before you then move on to becoming an active case taker where you, where, where you have your clients. And as I said, they're fully supervised with, um, they're fully supervised with the clinician who's running the clinic day. Um, and then you carry on with AMP, anatomy and physiology, uh, as we mentioned in all the different aspects, which again ties into the Materia Medica. So for example, say you're doing the female reproductive system, in the Materia Medica you could be doing about infertility, fertility, you could be doing about pregnancy, birth, uh, menopause, uh, all different aspects of the female reproductive system. Just like when you do the male reproductive system, you'll talk about all the issues around male, male issues that can come up and remedies for that. And then module three, which is in the final part of the course, you carry on Materia Medica, it's more advanced now. So you'll, you'll be doing a lot of Materia Medica based around pathology. Uh, so things like neurodegenerative diseases, uh, things like autoimmune diseases, things like that, ADHD, autism, and, and casework represent. And often we can bring people specifically teach and, and, and have, have practice in that area. Uh, so they like have an expertise in that area. So, so you really learn from the people that are doing it. And in fact, everybody that's teaching you here at CHE, they are all full-time practitioners, very successful practitioners, authors, leaders in their field. And some of them have got 20, 30, 40, 50 years of experience. And that's important because if you're going to learn, if you want to be a practitioner, you're going to be learning from people that are doing it, have done it, and are continuing to do it. Not they did it 20 years ago and now they just teach. No, you need to be, that's why I still practice. Well, number one, I love it, but also they, that you've got to be, you've got to be doing it. You've got to be doing things that look what's happened this past two years. You've got to be able to adapt to what's going on in the world. So, so we feel that's really crucial that that you are being taught by people that are doing homeopathy and are, you know, can not only just done it but continue to do it and also have expert uh, expertise in their field. Because some people have niches they go into, and this could happen to you as you as you. When you, once you're qualified, you may say, right, I want to specialize in, for example, fertility, or I want to specialize in eczema and asthma, or I want to specialize in children's uh, uh, issues. It's up to you, but you'll have so much information, so many tools in the toolbox, you can make the decision what you want to do. Um, clinical training continues, as I mentioned, you continue uh, as an as a, uh, active caretaker at our low-cost clinics, but also we get you to uh, go into supervision, and that's from the towards the uh, towards the end of the first year on the fast track, and the third year in the um, on the part time course. And I'll talk about that later about supervision. And then you continue with anatomy and physiology as we've mentioned before. So, for many people, they're changing careers, and they're going from one career to the other. And for a lot of people, they have to make a living. They have to pay the mortgage, they have to pay the rent, they have to buy the food, you know, and I'm a great believer in this about all practitioners should have a sustainable practice. When I qualified, as I started very young when I was 20, when I qualified, this was my only living. But I was told a lot, oh, we can't make a living out of homeopathy. Da, da, da. It was like, whoa, hang on a minute, Look, this has to be my living. I spent all this money training, I've worked three jobs. This, this is what I want to do with my life. So when I found the people that were doing it, that were making a sustainable practice, and as because this is a profession. And I always ask people, you know, practitioners, because I coach a lot of practitioners who are struggling, say, is this a hobby or is this a, is, is this a business? Because you have to have, if you want to be a practitioner, now some of you may say, no, I just want to do this, as, this do, do it for free, great, that's great. I'm now talking to the people that want to change careers and want to have a sustainable practice. So you have to, you have to have some of that training. And for a lot of people who have been employed before, coming self-employed is a bit of a shock. So, so we teach you this, how to build your practice. And we do it, as I said here, at the end of year one and the full time, fast track, sorry, or the third, beginning of the third year of the part time. 
So you expect it to start building your own practice, okay? Building your own practice. So it's bet you're best doing it, and this is the jewel and the crown of what we do. By getting you to start building your practice outside CHE, then you start, by the time you finish in that final year, you already have a practice up and running. So once you graduate, off you go. Now, it's mandatory if you do that, and it's mandatory at the end of that year one or the beginning of year three for part-time to have a supervisor. So this supervisor is like a mentor. This is somebody that you check in with once a month and you, you, we have a list of supervisors that we can provide. They check in once a month with them. So they're guiding you and mentoring you as you do this with your cases and as you, you're mentoring. So this is another extra level of support. You still have the tutorials live. You still have the lectures. You still have the... Um, you still have the our clinical workshops that we do, but this is now you building your practice outside of CHE. And you're allowed to charge a trainee rate for your clients or patients at this point. We have a whole protocol on this, which I well, can't, can't got the time to go into today, but you're allowed to charge uh, a trainee rate as long as you're not misrepresenting yourself as a, as a pract qualified practitioner. But again, we have a whole protocol on this. And so, as I said, by the time you get to the end of the second year or the fourth year part-time, you have a practice up and running. And part of your graduation criteria is to have a business plan. So we, my passion, my passion is for you to be in practice and have a sustainable business and living from it. And I wish somebody had taught me this when I was studying because when I was studying, we had none of this. <laughs> and just right at the very end, before we're about to finish, uh, a lecturer said, oh, yeah, give us a half an hour talk about building a practice. He said, yeah, just give out some leaflets and you'll build a practice. And I was naive. I was young. I was naive. And I, that's what I did. And guess what? Nothing happened. <laughs> Nothing happened. I think, I think any patients from doing that, clients from handing out leaflets. So that was a big shock to me. So I, I thought, oh, my goodness, you know, I've got all this knowledge and I've got all this passion, all this enthusiasm. What am I going to do? And so I went on my own journey with this of having to build my own practice. And it took me two years to build a practice up once I've qualified. And this is why many complementary therapists fail after their training. They're not giving, like we're getting you to do, build your practice whilst you're studying. Because then get guarantee if you do that, you will have a successful practice going forward. Because you, you, you haven't lost the momentum you're with, with your community. Okay, you're with your community. And we, we can give you any advice you need. Now, resources you get as a student, we have a learning portal, which I'll show you in a moment, online portal. And on the online portal, um, we also give you a student handbook, which is the whole two-year course or the whole four-year course. Do you guys ever been to university and get a handbook? You know what I'm talking about. It's everything you can imagine is in that handbook, everything you need to know about the course. And you get that once you enroll. Online resources, I've mentioned this. You have online access to our online library, research journals, online books, things you can access. Uh, and all the lectures, obviously, you've got are recorded, all the tutorials are recorded. So you can go back again, rewind them, watch them, pause them whenever. And also you have a book list. So if there's books there and all the books that you have, as I mentioned before, you can buy them very, very, they're very cheap now to buy books, as, you, as we know online. Um, but these books are for, 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 your, for your, your career, your homeopathic career, not just for the course. So every book you'll get. You, I mean, homeopaths get obsessed by books, honestly. I mean, I have so many books on homeopathy. You know, I'll see a homeopath see a book about homeopathy and, and rabbits, they'll buy it, or homeopathy and, you know, turtles, and they'll buy it um, because we're just obsessed by books and, and learning. Um, so this is the portal, very simple to use. You can access this on your mobile phone, your laptop, your, your uh, home computer, tablet. You can access it. As long as you've got an internet connection, you can access it. As you can see here, you just log in. Your resources are here, your tutorials are in there, all your recordings, and all the modules are there. And as I said, we don't release the whole uh, modules all at once. They get released two at a time, module one and two per month um, for the fast track, and one module a month for the part time. Okay? Otherwise, you'd be too overwhelmed. If we, and also, we're taking you on a learning journey. So we want everybody to be at the same point as we're moving through the course. Uh, as again, the port, everything's in there you need, as you can see on this side, these are all the videos uh, on here to, to watch, the lectures, all the module, and all your dates for the tutorials there for the whole year, all the module release dates when the modules normally the first of the month when they're going to be released. Um, assessment calendar is in there, which I'll talk about in a moment. Any assignment information is in the resources, lecture handouts, pan book, everything you need to know is in your resources section on the, on the student learning portal. 
And this is the handbook, as I mentioned. This is all the procedures are in there, contact communication, module structure, teaching, learning and uh, assessments, code of conduct, where to get support. Everything's in there, which you can download on and print off and have it in for yourself in a digital format. So assignments, and this is the big area for people, especially if you've been out of education for a long time. Um, they say 85% of people that are, that are in adult education are processing their previous education experiences and how true that is. Um, so if you've been out of education a long time, then sometimes it can be a bit daunting, thinking, oh my God, the first time you have to write an essay or the first time you have an online test. And you do have to do assignments. Uh, this is part of our, we have a very uh, strict uh, you know, assessment policy. You have to do assignments. We need to know uh, that, you, that you understand what we're teaching you and that you are a competent practitioner by the time you qualify. Nobody will qualify unless you've done all your assignments, passed all your assessments and your assignments, um, because we, people know when you graduate from CHE, they know that's a, that, that's a, a, a mark of a high level of edu homeopathic education, okay? And because we used to be, a, we used to run the degree course, we're very, very apt, the team are very um, competent uh, around this. So, so we have a very, a, a very rigorous pro pro uh, policy. And you have an assessment calendar at the beginning of the year, a uh, mixture of written assignments, short online tests, and there'll be clear marking criteria with each assignment. We're not trying to catch you out. We're not trying to catch you out. So you'll have the marking criteria, what the markers will be marking you against. So it's all very transparent. And all your work is marked, double mark, and a, and a sample gets sent to the external examiner. Again, it's a rigorous, a rigorous process. And here's an example of, a, of an assessment calendar. You'll get, again, we don't kill you with, with assessments. Um, but for example, the first one may be an essay. So you have the date, the direct is given out, the module it's connected to, what type of assignment. Uh, when you um, have to submit it. So normally it's a month after it's been given to you, you have a month to do the work. Um, so when you get your feedback by and then your resubmission date, uh, if you have to defer it for whatever reason, say you couldn't get it in on that date, you let the office know, that's the date you'd hand it in. Uh, or if you're doing the online tests, the online tests are here. Again, you, you'll know exactly what you're going to be tested on. And that is, so like the 15th of May, it's open for two weeks. So you have a two week window to sit the test. Uh, and then if you fail it, then you, you, you can take it again within that two week window. So you can see here is two, a couple of essays, online tests. And again, we prepare you all for it. Now, for a lot of people, as I said about the academic work, that some people need support. And so we provide, um, uh, there's a lady called Natasha who works for us. Uh, she graduated uh, in 2008 from CHE and she's been our academic support officer ever since. So she knows the course inside out. She's helped so many hundreds and hundreds of students uh, for, for us over the years. Um, and she's there available to you. You just got to click on the portal in the resources section. You can email her directly. She'll set up a Zoom call with you. She'll have times when she can speak with you to go through any academic uh, issues you may have. So maybe you don't understand the assignment, even though it's been explained, you don't really understand it. So she's there to help and go through that. You may not understand any feedback that you get from an assignment from the marker. She's there available to help you. And she also runs study skill uh, online classes. So you can attend, again, how to write an essay again, you know, how to learn again, all those things that if you haven't done it for a long time, it can be quite daunting. So we're here to support you. Okay, this is available to you, use it and let us know if you're struggling because we don't know if you, if you don't tell us. We, we don't know, but we want to help you. Um, also the support on the monthly tutorials, as, as I mentioned before, and this is support for your learning. We have pastoral support as well. So for example, you have going through some mental or emotional issues that's going on for you, uh, then you can contact uh, our pastoral support and they will support you. Um, and they can't be a therapist, they can't be a homeopath, but they're there for any acute situation that you need to discuss if you're having any difficulties. And it's, that's private between you and pastoral support, but we provide it as a service and support to you. But also the online student community group. So we have a, our, own, our own online student social media groups where we put you in groups and you interact. And, 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 and as I said, community is a really important thing. And the more support you can get from your students, your, your fellow students, the better. And we actively encourage that. And it's amazing. These, some of these groups are phenomenal. I just did a tutorial on Wednesday and the, the, somebody's going through a difficult time and the students have been amazing, supportive around them. In fact, the students said if it wasn't for the group, she didn't know what she would have done. 
And this is something going on personally for her in her life, nothing to do with studying. So, you know, you're going to make some really lifelong friends and we actively encourage you to, to do interact and be part of those online student groups. Because you can post a question, hey, you know, I'm not sure about, uh, thinking about giving this remedy, I'm not sure. Or on that lecture that they talked about potency, I wasn't sure about 30C or 6C, can you? And people will jump on. Because everybody's got so much different experience who come onto the course. Some people have been prescribing for 20 years for the family. So we're very experienced. Some people have only just really scratched the surface of what homeopathy can do. So there's a real mixed bag. But the end of it, by the end of it, you'll all be at the same level at the end of the course. So this is the monthly live tutorials. They'll be looking really happy and, and smiley. <laughs> um, I love doing the tutorials. Uh, we've talked about support here and guidance, academic support, tutorials, one-to-one -one feedback. And if you're encountering any problems or studying, we talked about that, then please contact us for one-to-one -one sessions for pastoral care. The fees for the four-year part-time course uh, is 3,350 per year, okay? The two-year fast track is obviously double that because you're doing it in two years instead of four. It's 6,700. And if you decide to do the one-year foundation course, that's 1,675. Now that is the foundation course, as I mentioned, it's just the first year of the part-time course, but basically no assignments, no assessments. You're just listening to the lectures, attending the tutorials, you get the handouts, but there's no assessments. However, if you decide, I think it's by the fifth module, you really want, actually, actually I really want to do this training, practitioner training, then you can convert to the part-time course, okay? You can't convert to the fast track because it's, a, it's going to be a different rate, but you can convert to the part-time course, okay? So if that's something that is interesting, then we let you know anyway within that after five months if it's something you want to do. And there's payment plans available for all these courses. So you can pay all at once or you can pay monthly. We have these monthly payment plans where it helps people to be able to pay for the courses. And you can see the link there, the, the, the link for the bit.ly link, CHE apply, or just go to the website www.chehomeopathy.com slash apply. Now, as I said, if you are feeling that this is something you want to do, if you feel that homeopathy is calling you, then follow your heart. But follow your heart if it's something you want to do. Within the interview, we can talk more on a one-to-one -one, uh, basis about, for example, some people say, oh, I really want to do the fast track, but I'm not sure I can, I can, I can do it at the time. Then we talk about it. And I'll be honest with you. If I, and I, I'm honest with, to, to, to people who apply all the time, if I feel that, you can't do this fast track if you even got the time or space to do it, then I'll advise you to do the part-time. Because I, I know that you, you know, what you need, I've done this a long time, I wanna have the right course that fits with you and your life. Because um, you know it's, it's very, very individual. And in, in the process of the application, you can ask me questions about the course and all different aspects, we can go into a bit deeper. Um, but really, it's just to see whether or not you are suitable for the course. Uh, and whether or not we will accept you onto the course. So, so I hope you enjoyed that present this presentation. And and I'm just looking at that picture actually with the with the tree and the and the sunlight. And um, I, I, it's just such an amazing homeopathy. Is just such an amazing thing. And um, I was saying the story last night, and I'll, and I'll repeat it. I remember when, even though I've been practicing homeopathy for a long time before I had my first my first child, Jimmy got a couple of kids. And uh, when he was a baby, and, I, and I'd run a mother and baby clinic for many years, you know, treating all different things. And I remember when he was just born, and it was the middle of the night, I think two o'clock in the morning, like it normally is in these, these situations, fevers, coughs, colds, middle of the night. And he was in such pain with colic. He was writhing in pain. And you know, as a, you know, as a, as a parent, you do anything to take that pain away. And I reached for the remedy kit in the middle of the night, trying to find the remedy, chamomilla, and I gave it to him. And I remember as soon as it hit his tongue, his mouth, he just let out this sigh. It was like a, and his whole body just relaxed. And he closed his eyes. And I remember thinking, wow, <laughs> it's amazing. Homeopathy is amazing. And at that moment, I realized, well, all those mothers and all those parents used to bring me presents and gifts and cards saying, thank you so much. Today. Because when you see that, when you see homeopathy work like that, I mean, you'll do anything to take that pain away. When you see that, then you never forget it. You never forget it. And that's why I feel so grateful that homeopathy is in my life. 
it's in the life of my children, it's in the life of my families, um, because it's given me so much. And, and even though I, I trained, I was really young, it was unusual, I was only 20 as I started my training, as I mentioned, and I thought I knew everything about life. <laughs> Obviously I didn't, but I thought I did. Um, I, I realized looking back 30 years that actually gave me the philosophy for the rest of my life. I felt so blessed because it gave me that philosophy uh, and of health and well-being and of life because homeopathy becomes a way of life it's, it becomes a, like a life philosophy it's a different health paradigm it's a different paradigm about how we see the world and i just i've just been internally grateful for that it, and it's given me personally so much and and also my, all my patients and clients that i've treated o over these years and you, you it's, it's an amazing thing and I, and I often remind students when they're studying and maybe they're you know struggling with an assignment or assessment or whatever I always say just re, just just remember why you're doing this that passion that that passion that enthusiasm that love for the subject because it's an amazing subject and the more that you learn it the more that you go into it it's like opening a box of like of magic it's like oh my goodness this is just phenomenal and you go deeper and you go deeper into it and I'm telling you now, 30 years on, you can see I still love and passionate about the subject of homeopathy. So I thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate your time listening to this. And our next intake will be September 2022. So go to the website, www.homeopathy.com. Uh, I think with this recording, there's also a link as well uh, in, in the email. So um, I look forward to seeing you at the interview uh, if you do apply. And um, yes, may the vital force be with you all.